Hi, and welcome to this World War II themed lesson all about code breaking. And today you're gonna to have a go at writing your own secret messages in a special type of code that only you and your allies can understand. So to start with, you could use the student page. It's got everything you need for this activity. So that you can go to tinyurl.com slash express code break, or you could scan this QR code. Uh, there's a bit of information about Alan Turing and the Enigma machine, which you might have gone over with your teacher already. And then down here, we've got our cipher wheel. So we're gonna use these two images, the inner wheel and the outer wheel. And we're gonna create a way of, of making coded messages. So to start with, I'm gonna to go to Adobe Express. I'm gonna press the plus in the top left and I'm gonna to go to landscape. Now I'm gonna go back to my student page and I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the bigger wheel first, the outer wheel. So I'm gonna right click, gonna to go to copy image and I'm gonna to go to Adobe Express and I'm gonna paste it. So I'm gonna right click and press paste. Or you could use the keyboard shortcut control V if you feel like it. There we go, that's our outer wheel. I'm gonna go back to the student page. We're gonna go for the inner wheel now. This is the smaller wheel and you'll see how this works. So we go right click, copy image, back to Adobe Express, right click, paste. And there we go, it's the perfect size, but we don't want this like white part around the outside. Now we could use the remove background tool, but it doesn't do a perfect job of it on this. I've tested it. Um, so I'm gonna select this image. We're actually gonna crop the image as a perfect circle and that'll get rid of this white part. So if you select the image and you go to crop, choose a perfect circle, uh, and it's done a perfect job. There you go, just click off the page. We've got rid of the white part. If I just change the background color, just so you can see uh, that the other one has this white border as well, which we wanna get rid of. So I'm gonna select the outer wheel or this white part. I'm gonna to go to crop, choose a perfect circle. And again, it's got rid of it. Just click on the page, perfect. So we have our two wheels. So I'm just gonna select them both. Uh, just move them to this side, make them slightly larger. And you'll see that later on, we'll be able to get this outer wheel and rotate it and actually create a secret message. So now we've got our cipher wheel. We're gonna write a secret message with that in a little bit, but first I'd like to get a nice background image. So I'm gonna to go to media, uh, I'm on photos. I'm just gonna search for code and see if something interesting comes up. Something maybe that looks like a sort of secret code. Uh, this one looks quite good. So I'm gonna select the image, now it's on my page and I'm gonna press set as page background and I think that's looking pretty good. Now, this is a World War II themed poster, so I want a couple of images which kind of give it that World War II theme. So I'm gonna to go to media uh, and I'm gonna search in photos for World War II and I'm gonna see what comes up. Uh, here's a nice one, this kind of bomber. Uh, I might want that on my page somewhere. So I've just clicked it and it's appeared on my page. So I'm just gonna select the image uh, and I'm going to remove the background on this image. And it's done a pretty good job there. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is play around with the, the blending modes. So if I go down here, there's a couple of blending modes I can choose from. I'm gonna go for multiply. I think that looks pretty nice. Uh, it's more of a background image. I quite like that it's quite dark like that. So I might just put it there. Uh, I'm gonna go back to media. I'm gonna see if there's any other images. It might be nice to get a person or maybe a soldier into my picture. This looks pretty good. I'm gonna click on this picture here. Uh, and I'm gonna remove the background of this one as well. This nice black and white photo. So I'm gonna press the remove background tool. There we go, that's looking really good. So I might just put our, our soldier friend here maybe. Now I might want to bring him down the layers a bit. So I'm just gonna drag him down the layers here. There we go, maybe make him slightly larger like that. And I'm just gonna play with the opacity. So opacity means uh, if I reduce the opacity, if I bring this slider down, it'll make him a bit more see-through. I kind of want that code coming through a bit. There we go, I think that looks quite artistic. So now I need a couple of bits of paper now to write our secret messages on. So I'm gonna to go to elements and I'm just gonna search for paper. And I'm gonna see if there's something which looks like a little bit of paper, which I might write a secret message on. I think this one looks pretty good. So I'm gonna click it uh, and I'm gonna click it again because I'm gonna actually write two little secret messages. So I might just rotate this one ever so slightly. There we go, just to kind of make it feel a bit sort of messier, a bit rougher. Right, now I need to actually encrypt my messages. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a Caesar cipher tool uh, online and there's many different ones you can use online. There's one in this example, but you can just, you can find your own Caesar, Caesar wheel um, and you can encrypt your own message. And I'm just gonna show you how to do that. 
So if we go back to the student page, if we scroll down, we can see there's a button here that says Cypher Wheel. And this is how it works. So um, we can spin this outer wheel and it means that the letters on the outer wheel line up with the letters on the inner wheel. So for example, if I've set it so it was just AA -A, uh, and then I wrote a secret message down here, I might write this secret message. You can see it's not actually been uh, encrypted because A equals A, B equals B. What we can do then is if we drag this or if we rotate the outer wheel clockwise, let's say for example, we, go, we want to use a shift key of three. So what we do is we, we spin the outer wheel three spaces clockwise. So one, two, three. Now that's called a shift key of three because we've shifted the outer wheel clockwise three spaces. And what that means is uh, the T in my secret message now becomes a W and the H in my secret message becomes a K. I'm gonna use a shift key of eight actually today. So you can see if I spin this wheel, you can see the ciphertext is changing every time we move the wheel around one space. So I'm gonna use a shift key of eight, which means we end up with the S here above the A. So this is my ciphertext or my encrypted message, my secret message. So I'm going to highlight this text here and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna copy that secret message that says this secret message. I'm gonna go back to my work and I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut control V. So I'm gonna control V and there is our secret message. And you'll remember we used a shift key of eight. So we turned that outer wheel eight spaces clockwise. So I'm just gonna line that up, make that look quite good. And if I go back to the cipher wheel, I'm gonna write the next part of my message is a total enigma. And as you can see, we're still on a shift key of eight because that S is above the A. So I'm just going to right click, copy this bit of text, and I'm gonna use control V. So hold down control with one hand, press V with the other one and there's a second part of our message there. So I'm just gonna line those up. So I might just think about uh, changing the font to something which looks a bit more suitable. That's quite nice, Gloria Hallelujah. I think that looks quite good. It looks like it's sort of been handwritten almost this one. So I'm gonna select this other one. I'm gonna to go to the fonts here. And as you can see, it actually says fonts that are in use right now. So Gloria Hallelujah is there. So I'm just gonna think about putting them in the center there. Now, obviously with your secret codes, what you would do is you would tell your friend uh, the shift key. So if you told your friend that this was a shift key of eight, they would then be able to decode your message because they would know to turn the outer wheel eight spaces clockwise. But because whoever's gonna be looking at this, they don't know the shift key. So what we can actually do is our cipher wheel on the right hand side is we're gonna turn that outer wheel eight spaces to the right so that it, it shows us a shift key of eight. So I'm just gonna select that outer wheel. I'm gonna use this rotate tool and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we know that the S will be above the A. There we go, that's looking great. So now whoever gets this image is gonna be able to decode or decrypt the message using the cipher wheel. The last thing I'm gonna to do to make the work really come together is I'm gonna add something called a texture overlay and it will also help us give it this sort of World War II historical feel. So if I go to elements on the left hand side, I'm just gonna search for texture. This will give us a bunch of overlays which we could choose one and put it over our whole image. So I'm gonna choose one that I think will give it a sort of that old timey feel. This one looks pretty good. Uh, and I'm just gonna make sure it covers the whole page. So I'm gonna drag the corner down like that. And as you can see, it kind of gives it this speckled sort of spattered black marks all over the page. Now it's a little intense for me right now. So what we can do is the same thing we did with the soldier is we can bring the opacity down just slightly. So I'm just got, I've got my texture overlay selected and I'm just gonna bring the opacity down just so it's a bit more of a subtle effect. Now, there we go. That's our secret encoded messages only for our allies to understand. Uh, so what we can do now is we can download the image. So I'm gonna press download. Uh, we're gonna get a PNG, press download. And that's downloaded it to my computer. We can also press share and we can press publish to web. We can give our work a title and press publish link. And you'll see at the bottom it says it's publishing your design. This will then generate a link which you can share on Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams with whoever you like. 
um, we can just press copy link down here and if I open it in a new browser window we'll see our finished piece of work and your friends can have a go at decoding your messages. Thank you.